So one of the cool things about uh, helping people set up their units when they get them and uh, now being on the uh, pro staff for Navico is I get to look at some of the units beforehand and this is a friend's um, new Lawrence Elite TI-2 and one of the things I noticed right off the bat when I unboxed it was that you know with the protective uh, plastic and stuff that it comes packaged in it had a little bit of a film on the display so what I did is I just took a chamois you don't have to use a Lawrence one like this but um, a chamois cloth um, I spray Windex on the cloth never on the unit and I just clean the uh, the screen the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the uh, process of doing the touchscreen calibration so with the unit off what we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold the waypoint button power the unit on it's easier said than done with one hand and video videoing so here we go continue to hold that waypoint until you hear that double beep and you can let go and it should start the auto calibrate process well it's actually gonna on the elite ti2s it's gonna ask for some help from the user all right so here we go so that's kind of small but it's saying touch crosshair to calibrate so we're just gonna follow that routine jumps over to here And that's it for the touchscreen calibration. And it sits there for a while and then finally it'll boot up into the system. So if you open yours up, you install it, and you're experiencing anything like that, go ahead and clean the, the front of the display and also do the touchscreen calibration. Okay? So it wants you to register the thing. We can do this later. You can uh, do it via phone if you're not going to connect directly to your wireless network at your house, which I'm not going to do right now. So I'm just going to touch back. And it's some more information about registering your device, which you really should, but we're going to do that later. All right, and you can see it dropped into the info screen. One thing I want to point out right off the bat is they've put this little icon here now to indicate to you where your micro SD card will go in the past I had questions about where is it on these units well it's kind of interesting because they tucked it underneath all right I know the lighting down here is a little poor but it's right underneath the the rubber Lawrence uh, logo and you press that in there make sure that you keep that securely pressed and sealed to keep your watertight integrity when you're out on the water um, nothing on the front of the screen's really changed. You have your power button, waypoints, zoom in, zoom out, press them simultaneously for a man overboard. I've never had to do that. But then your pages. You hit the pages button and it brings you to your home screen. So like I showed you the other day when I fired up my new HDS Live unit, you have your toolbar over here with all the standard stuff. And then your icons have changed a little bit, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Chart, sonar, side scan, down imaging, uh, steer, and info. All right, and then again over here, you can customize and create your own screens. All right, your own favorites for combinations of, let's say, sonar. This one, for instance, is sonar, side imaging, and down imaging. So nothing new there, you'll follow the same process. Things that I've gone over uh, at fairs in my first seminar. One of the neatest things about this new Elite TI-2 is that if you're gonna network two on your boat, all right, you do not have to use any kind of network cables for ethernet. It's got wireless ethernet capabilities built into it. All right, so if you have a unit up front, you have a unit at your console, you want to share a single memory chip, you can do that very easily now. Um, all the other things that you would share, new waypoints instead of just, um, well, new and old waypoints, I should say, instead of just new waypoints, like uh, some folks found out that you can do that with a NEMA 2000 network cable. But anyway, um, if you go in, you press the power button, 
All right, you get your uh, system control dialog box just like you did before. And you have your various things that you can uh, change and manipulate there. Brightness, night mode, record, log sonar, data overlay, on or off, edit overlay, wireless, which again, on this one, it's pretty important. I'll try to do a little video on that later. But people who are familiar with... Um, wireless networks and so forth should have no problem with that whatsoever. This is just kind of an intro uh, video. Um, with this unit, um, this particular user bought the new Active Imaging 3-in-1 transducer. Be careful if you order them because there are just Active Imaging 2-in-1 transducers which gives you just side and down imaging capability. The 3-in-1 will give you 2D sonar, side scan imaging, and down imaging. With this transducer, um, I went out and did some research already. There's not a lot on this new transducer as to what makes the imaging, um, the images themselves so much more enhanced. But what I did find out is that this transducer is made of a new polymer and that polymer um, is closely related to the properties of water. So if you can just picture in your mind that with this new polymer, it's not so different than, than water per se that it, it actually would interrupt with how well the signal is received. So in other words, with this new polymer, of course it's not the same as water, it's a solid, whereas water obviously is a liquid, but it's different in the way that it receives the signal. The other really important thing about the new active imaging transducer that I found out is that the active imaging transducer has separate transmit and receive elements in it. Standard and older transducers would actually switch between those two modes. So if you think about the time difference that it would take to switch between transmit and receive, there's going to be information that's lost in that duration. Um, standard transducers, when they ping, they resonate. That's what sends the sound waves into the water. And they actually ring as well. So until that ringing stops after it transmits the signal, um, there's a period of time where the older transducers would switch from that transmit mode and they didn't trans uh, switch rather to the receive mode until that ringing ended because it wouldn't be able to receive the signal. I know that's a lot in a, in a quick summary, but the difference between having their own separate active um, transmit and receive elements makes a huge difference. It increases um, the amount of time or ping speed. And ping speed, despite what some people might have you believe, does relate to better images. Um, what else can I say about the transducer? That's it for now, I guess. I mean, the real test will be out on the water. Um, I installed my HDS Live unit the other day, but I used it with the existing uh, 3D enhanced um, transducer in the 3D module. And I actually reached out to Lawrence and they did explain to me that, yes, of course that will work and you'll have better imaging than I had with the old LSS2 transducer, but because of this new technology and the active imaging transducer, to get the benefits from that, um, I can use this transducer instead. To be honest with you, I was never a huge fan of the 3D capability, unfortunately. You know, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but I did spend the money on the 3D module, gave me the enhanced 3D transducer and enhanced imaging. Um, but overall, I think I'm going to be more beneficial to take that off and install the new active imaging transducer. I'll do some more on this in, in the future, but uh, I reached out to this user, asked him if I could unbox this and just power it up. And first look, like I said, out on the water, even with my new HDS Live, was, uh, was excellent. And uh, I'll be doing some more videos, and down the road, I know I'll be doing some more seminars at theirs. All right, just thought I'd give you guys a sneak peek.